Yay! The wait is finally over, and Justice League Batman is in the house. The box art is the same style as previous Hot Toys release of Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Flash. You can see the Batman graphic on the three panels on the art sleeve. Once I remove the art sleeve, you can see the contact right the box window. You got the figure, you got the accessories, and a band athlete head sculpt. Looks amazing. This time we finally get a great head sculpt of Ben Affleck with our Batman figure. Nice. The overall sculpt and paint of the head sculpt is pretty good. So, how does it compare to third party's offering? For example, Eleven's sculpt earlier released. Almost there. Voila. You can see they both capture Ben Affleck. Excellent. While Hot Toys Cup looks younger, and Eleven has a more age appropriate. I just rewatched the movie, and I recall that um, Ben Affleck have a quite heavy five foot shadow, and the stubbies. So Hot Toys just look younger, so it depends on your preference. Let's take another look at another Ben Affleck offering. This one is more serious look. What do you guys think? The costume is a perfect recreation of JL Batman. The most apparent change got to be the car which was streamlined for the movie. Furthermore, Hot Toys redesigned the body by changing the bicep design, shortening the pelvis, and modification of its tie muscle for a much more natural look. The cape also uses pleather like material and is very similar to the tactical suit Batman. However, there are no wires in it, so you cannot shape it. I have borrowed friends photo for a quick comparison. On the left you have BBS which is short and stumpy. Suicide Squad is a little bit taller and they fine tune the physique for JL Batman. For the tactical suit, it's about the same height as JL Batman, but his muscle was just too big, thus make his legs look short. Let's take another closer look at his cape. This one is for JL Batman. You can see the logo, and it was meant to be wear without the mask. Material is a single layer of pleather material. It's very similar to the cape from the tactical suit, as you can see. Well, except maybe there's more weathering or better damage on the tactical suit. Many scars. Okay. So, in general, it feels like the same type of material. Let me show you side by side. One is smoother and one is more scarred. Okay. Also, the end of the cape is just regular. They don't have any patterns or cuttings on that. It's quite simple. And it does not have any wire to do any action pose. Then, we take a look at a custom bag cape by Unreal Customs. It got wire all over the places, you can see. And also cut out at the end of the cape. See, on the side, on the middle. Check out his Facebook page. You even got double layer of patterns. Good quality. There are many wires to hold on to the neck post so they can support the cape easily. I believe this is one of my favorite Batman posts. What do you guys think?
Overall, articulation is pretty good, maybe with the exception of the torso area. There are some resistance due to the rubber muscle in the chest area. You can see, you can bend it a little bit, but not all the way. It keep push you back. However, his back is quite flexible. You can arch back pretty good. However, his side by side is not too good. Also because of the chest muscle restricting the movement. His shoulders has the standard or uh, butterfly joint. So you can lift it, you can turn it, but just up to a certain degree. And also, the suit is a little bit thicker, so it should be quite durable when you pose it, as it should be able to stretch back and endure your posing. However, because of the big muscle body, even though they have some double uh, joints for the, uh, for the elbow or the knee, they would not go all the way. See, you can push it back, you can push it up. See? The knee, even though they have double uh, knee joints, it cannot go up all the way, just like that. That's it. Right? And then you have hard muscle for the thigh and then for the arms. As the foot is, foot is a two-piece design, you got a lot of end core articulation. Good job. And also, his thigh and hip articulation is pretty good. As the suit is stretchable, you can do any pose you want. For the deluxe edition, we have the Parademon Diorama base. You have a partial dead Parademon lying down, sculpted and painted in good details. However, it's not meant to light up, thus, nowhere to install your batteries. See, the eyes cannot light up, but still a pretty nice piece. Now the regular accessories. The Parademon rifle is a new item and it looks good. Very unique style and quality paintwork as usual. However, no wing parts and primarily as a display piece. Next, we have the mobile device used by Batman, displaying the map of Gotham. There's a magnet in the back, so you just attach it to the forearm magnetically and it stays on. It's not a lock-in or anything, but it stays on. So, I'm not sure if I like it, but well, we'll just put it aside until we need it. Then we have the bat rans, grappling guns, etc, etc, which is recycled from previous release, and I will leave it there. This time we have eight glove hand shapes, just like previous release. Your standard relaxed palm, with the paint and details, your clothes fits, okay, pen down, the hand to hold the grappling gun, another hand to hold the device, pretty good. And finally, one for the bat ran. We also have the redesigned bat cowl with the interchangeable face plate and eye shape. Well, you just push it out. There you go. It's attached by magnet. It doesn't lock in. You push it out and you swap the next one. Quite easy. Okay. Looks good. Then you use the tool to replace the eye shape. Looking forward, left and right. Use the tool, poke it in, pull it out. And there you go. Wow, that's easy. 
See, it's just right there. After that, you pick a new one, put it on the hook, and stuck it in. Because it's a streamlined car, it might be tricky to get it fit in. See, there you go. How do you like it? There is also a neck piece to be clipped onto the figure to help set up the cape for the unmasked hat. See, basically it's a snap-on. Find the, find the position and push it in. Okay, quite steady. Okay, then you put on the cape showing the logo right there. And actually, on the front, they have a piece of magnet, while on the back, they have a Velcro strip. You see right there? Let me show you one more time. Let me bring it closer. So there's a magnet. Flip it open. See it? See it? It closes. So the magnet and the Velcro help steady the cape. How does it look? Looks pretty good, I would say. Collectors online have questioned the accuracy of this figure when the tip seems longer than the movie stills. Well, I learned that they actually used two different capes in the movie. Hence, the cape for the mask hat would be slightly longer to cover the tip. However, Hot Toys can only provide one cape, thus it's accurate for the unmasked hat while slightly shorter for the mask one. This is Hot Toys' third attempt on the Ben Affleck Batman, and they continue to make improvements on this already excellent figure. Personally, I try to focus my collection on Marvel figures, but I will definitely hold on to the DC Trinity, as it will probably be a while before we get any decent six-scale figures on them. Things I like about this figure include the redesigned body, giving a more natural physique, an excellent band effort has got for the first and last time. I also quite like the Parademon diorama base that comes with the deluxe edition. My only complaint is that I hope Hot Toys can improve their abdominal rubber muscle to allow greater flexibility in future. So, I hope to see Justice League Superman soon and complete my trinity. Until then, that's all folks.